So today what I want to do, I've got, I'm going to, I'm going to conclude, I think, I'm going to conclude this series called Unleash. Everybody say Unleash. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and turn to your neighbor and say, I see freedom on you today. Yeah, I, I, I'm looking at y'all, man. Listen, I see some freedom in this place today. Go ahead and tell that other neighbor who's, that, that one wasn't listening to y'all. Listen, if, if they just keep looking straight ahead, that means, look, they ain't listening to you. That means you go, hey, neighbor, I need to talk to you real quick. You know, I see freedom on you. Amen. Turn to somebody and say, I, f- I see freedom. Yeah, I see freedom. I see freedom. I see freedom. I see freedom. Yeah. So today is the uh, Unleashed Part 5. I'm going to try to conclude this. I'm going to preach. I'm going to teach. Uh, we're going to get to see signs, wonders, and miracles. I believe that. Uh, everybody say Unleash. So here's what Unleash means. We've been talking about it. This is uh, Part 5. In our series, it means to be set free. Did you hear me? There's a lot of people, you might as well have some spiritual handcuffs on. Now, I know other people can't see it, but it means, unleashed means to be set free. Or watch this, or unrestrained. Unrestrained. Set free or unrestrained. The Bible says in John chapter 8, verse 36, I'm excited. John 8, 36 to the note takers. So... If the Son sets you free, you will remain in jail for four more days. So if the Son sets you free, you will be... I want us to read that together. I want that to get in y'all's spirit. Because I prophesy that over your life here today. Listen to me. So, if the Son sets you free free, you will be free indeed. Read it one more time. We're, we, get, we got about 50 people participating. So we're going to do this until everybody says it. And I don't know. I don't know. So you ready? John 8, 36. Y'all say it like you mean it. Because if you say, look how convincing some of you are. I, I want you to look at what I see in some of you. So if the sun <laughs> sets you free, you're free indeed. I will not follow you. Because <laughs> you're not convincing. I'm looking, look, how many of y'all are free here today? I, I want to see some evidence of freedom just for five more times. I want to see some evidence that you've been born again. You're not in spiritual jail. You've been set free. You know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. You're not ashamed of him. I am free. And it don't matter what anybody else thinks. I'm free. Come on, everybody say I'm free. Come on, I'm free. Yeah, I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. Some of you are allowing people to keep y'all in prison. So listen, as I'm preaching right now, and as I'm ministering to you, I want you to listen to this. Right now, as I am speaking, 17,491,000 people are depressed living in the United States. I'm going to say this again. 17,491 people are depressed and living in the United States. Listen to this. There were 48,344 suicides in 2020. Did you hear me? 48,344 suicides in 2020. Listen to me. That's approximately 132 people die every day. Of suicide. Oh, I'm free, preacher. Listen to me. I'm going somewhere. Suicide is the 10th leading cause of death in the United States. It's the 10th leading cause of death in the United States. Over, listen to this, I'm going somewhere. Over 10,000 churches have closed their doors since March the 11th, 2020. Over 10,000. Everybody say over 10,000. I hope this this puts a burr under y'all's saddle. Church, listen to me. There are over 2.71 million divorces in 2020. Wow. Church, does that sound like freedom? Does that sound like freedom? Y'all talk to me. That, That is not. That is not. That is not freedom. So today, here's what my commission is. My assignment is today is, is a quick lesson. How to change your life forever. 
And you say, Brian, I, I, Jesus did Listen, how many of you know there are people who are depressed, knows that Jesus Christ is the answer, but they're still depressed? There is something deeper to this issue, and a lot of us don't even look at it. We don't pay attention to it. But I'm going to get, I'm telling you, I'm excited about this. So if you'll lean in and you'll listen to me, I'm going to give you the key, the key to being unleashed. Hallelujah. Set free, unrestrained. The chains are gone. You're, you're, you're in freedom. How many of you know we're, we should be in freedom? Yes, I know that there's going to be hard days. Look at me. I'm not, I'm not crazy. I know there's going to be hard days. I'm, depression knocks on my door almost every single day. And y'all can look at me sideways if you want to. I'm telling you the truth. Depression knocks at my door every single day. Brian, just get down. Just stop. Just quit. They ain't listening to you. Go into, and I'm telling you, it's real. It's real. It is real. And what, that little pill that we take, all it does is numb you. I got a God that wants to set you free. And I'm proclaiming today freedom in this house. I know it happened on Pentecost, but I'm looking at a church that needs to be set free. Everybody, everybody, everybody needs to be set free. So what is the, watch this, watch what the Bible says. I love this because here's the key. A lot of us miss this, but I got to lay a foundation before we build a house. Isaiah 57. Ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Isaiah 57, verse 18 and 19. So good. Isaiah 57, verse 18 and 19. The Bible says, I have seen his ways. I've seen his ways, and I, and I will heal him. I will also lead him and restore comfort to him. And to all his mourners, I create the fruit of the lips. Uh-oh. Underline it in your Bible. I create the fruit of the lips. There's one translation. I really should have put this one up here. But it says, God says, I create from the fruit of the lips. I create from the fruit of the lips. Peace, peace to him who is far off. Listen to me. God says, peace, peace. And to those who are far off from him. And to him who is near, says the Lord, I will heal him. But we miss the little secret ingredient all the time. And I, I'm excited to preach this to you because I'm telling you, if you get this one little secret down, I promise you, if I was a gambler, I would bet you on this, but I'm not. This works. Not because I'm speaking it. This works because God established it. His word is yes and amen. We will stand before God one day on every word that comes from our mouth. Boy, that'll make you shake. I love this. Listen to me. I want you to lean in. Listen to me really quick. Because what I'm getting ready to say this morning, right now, is going to change your life forever. Listen to this. God said, everybody say God said. God said. Listen to me. God said, I create. I create. Create means form, fashion, or mold together. Woo. So God says, I create, I, I, I form, I fashion, and I mold together the fruit that comes from your lips. Let me go deeper. Can I go deeper with y'all? <clears throat> or the words that come off your lips. God said, I love this because this is the answer to some of your, your situations. God said, I will start creating what you speak. Y'all don't understand. Listen, God says, I will start forming. I will start fashioning together. I feel the Holy Ghost. I will start molding together. He is the potter and we are the clay. The problem with the church of the United States is we want to be the potter while he wants to be the clay. God says, if you will let me mold you, if you will let me fashion you, if you will let me put you together, how's he going to do it? So good. He says, I will create from the words, the fruit of your lips. The fruit, there you go. We got kids over, that's good. The words, what if I told you, according to God's word, I'm gonna show you, your miracle, I feel this, your healing, your family coming back together all depends upon the fruit, the words coming from your mouth. Coming from your lips. I'm telling y'all, here's what I'm saying. Your words create things. Your words can create trouble. Your words can create peace. Your words can set people free. Your I, mm, I've got to get back. Your words 
can either create or destroy things. So be careful. Listen to you. I'm telling you. I feel this in my bones today. Be careful what you say. And be very careful how you say it. Because I'm telling you what you speak. It's either going to create or tear down. It's either going to build up or destroy. You say, Brian, I already know this. Well, quit speaking death. Quit speaking death. I stopped by here today to tell somebody if your miracle is in your words. Your, your home getting back together is how you're speaking over your family. Woo! Preach that, preach that. I think I will. Your words are powerful. Your words are, I get so tired, I'm going I'm to I'm bust this lie up. Because we say this and we make excuses to live like heathens. We make excuses to say, oh, I was just born like that. I was just on the, I'm born on the other side of the tracks. Oh, my daddy was like that. and My brothers were like that. You're telling me that flesh and blood is more powerful than the Holy Ghost? You're telling me you're more powerful that God can't change you? You're looking at a man used to cuss. I'm talking syllables. Oh, sorry. I'm at the wrong place. Lord, you gave me the wrong word today. I'm telling you. Listen, I'm telling you. This. How do you get God to work in your life? These are some nuggets. These are some things, guys, that listen to me. If we're going to be a 21st century church, we got to change our words. we got to believe what we've been trying to speak. Because a lot of people will speak out both sides. They'll, tell, they'll give you scripture. They'll give you verses. But in the bathroom, they'll tell you a dirty joke. <laughs> Fly, Holy Ghost. Yeah. It's truth. They'll give you scripture and they'll be sitting down and cussing like a sailor. And y'all know them. Don't y'all look at me. Y'all know them. How do we get God to work in our life? It's so good. How do you activate God's miracle working power in your life? How do you call things that are not as though they are? This is so good. God says, I promise, this is so good. Y'all may not get happy. I get happy over the word. Because, man, listen, when I was, God, God was downloading this to me, Allison, I felt freedom just like, Brian, that's the answer. Brian, you've complicated the gospel. Brian, you've complicated my name. Brian, the power of life and death lies within your tongue. Let me go on. Are y'all with me? Say, I'm with you. Listen, I'll get some good stuff here. Hang on. How do you do that? God says oh, everything that he has, everything. Is everything that he has is linked. I love this. He told me, you tell them that everything that I have in heaven is linked to my creative power and miracle signs and wonders and the words that come off their lips. Dr. Billy Graham. Dr. Billy Graham. Now that'll get your attention. He's the evangelist. Dr. Billy Graham said these words. There's a bunch of answered prayers in heaven, but they've not asked for them yet. Dr. Billy Graham said that. He said, I'm telling your children coming home. If, I feel, if you'll just speak it. If you'll just say, prodigal, come home. I'm waiting for you at the door. I'm not going nowhere. He, Dr. Billy Graham says, the answer to your prayers is in heaven. But nobody's asking for them. Nobody's asking for them. God says, everything that he has, hallelujah, is linked to, to the fruit that comes off your lips. I feel the Holy Ghost. Y'all may not, but I feel it this morning. God says, he, he would create whatever you keep speaking. That's what the Lord spoke unto my spirit. God says, you keep speaking it. You keep knocking. You keep asking. You keep coming after me like the hound of heaven. You keep asking and you'll get it. And I'm going to show y'all scripture. Because we've been in church all of our life. And God has given us word and revelation. And we got the power inside of us. Y'all don't have to call me to come lay hands on you. You, I feel, listen to me. The other day, my head was pounding and pounding. I don't know if it was allergies. I don't know if it was sinuses. I don't know. It's Kentucky. 
I did not call Pastor Joey. Y'all don't get mad at me. I'm trying to help set y'all free. And y'all sitting there going, who, who do I call? Brian, I'm going to tell you. I was walking through my house. And man, I was like, golly, they had to pray for me. And she said, I have been. Thank God. But I started, I laid my right hand, I laid my left hand on my head, and I said, God, I feel so good. You are in me. And 1 John chapter 2 says this, if God is in you, sickness can't be in you. I said, God, my head is pounding. Lord, I can't take it no more. I put my right hand, I put my left hand, headache in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Come out, get away from me. And y'all can look at me all you want to, but I'm telling you in a matter of seconds, it boom, gone. Gone, 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 gone. And I'm telling you the same power that is in me, that is the same power that is in you here today. But I'm telling you how you speak determines your answer. How you talk. See, some of you speak in tongues, you don't even realize it. <laughs> if, I can get to, if I can get this word in, in y'all today, this morning, God said, I create. Y'all think about this. How we speak determines how God creates. Whew. Are y'all getting this, please? And I know it's not about a shout, but I'm telling you, this is a rhema word for the churches today, for pastors today, for deacons today, for leadership today, for everybody today. It's not, listen, this sermon will set you free. I wish you would record yourself how you talk. If your dog could talk, what would they say that you said? That's a Pentecost. Here's a Baptist. So it's okay. It's okay. God said, how you speak is how I form. How you speak is how he forms. What he said in Isaiah. I love this. God says, I create, I form, I fashion, mold together, whatever you keep speaking. What, here's mama's daddy's. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. I know it may have been years and years and years, and you're still in the trenches of prayer. But I'm telling you, I see prodigals in my spirit coming back home. I see marriages coming back together. I see things in my spirit that you may not be able to see today, but I prophesy, I speak it today, and you got to receive it sometime in your life. How many of y'all know, watch, Here's, let's do a test really quick. Has that corn, has that corn set y'all free? Church, listen, church attendance won't do nothing to put you in bondage a lot of times. Because what happens is you start getting a checklist. I was here Sunday. I was here Monday. I was here Tuesday. And next thing you know, all you can say is you wore out. Bobby, Bobby made a post yesterday. I don't have Facebook, but Dana showed it to me. And I, I knew this was going to come up in my, my sermon today. Bobby said, you can pray over people for years. In years, you can anoint their head with oil. And he said, if they don't receive it, all they will be is an oily devil. Yeah. Listen, you got a decision to make. Because listen, everybody today is going to make a decision. If you walk out and say, I'm good, I'm good. You made a decision. If you walk out sick in your body, you made a decision. I'm looking for a church that's not going to be normal. Not going to be satisfied. I'm looking for a 21st century church that believes in all the Bible. You don't pull. You don't tug. You don't mark out. You say, God, you said it. I may not understand it, but God, you said it. I'm holding you to it, and I'm staying until I see it. Y'all yeah. got a different pastor in front of you. You got a different pastor. Second week of July, my life totally changed. And whether you believe it or not, watch this. I really don't care. Because it was between me and him. But it took a back porch experience. When's the last time you've experienced him? When's the last time, be honest with me, that you have, I'm talking man, I'm talking Holy Ghost tears coming down your face. I'm talking about you finally realize that you can't even walk, you can't talk, you can't breathe, you can't do anything without Jesus Christ. Have you been to that point yet? 
Because I have. I don't want to be, watch, I don't want to be just a normal little Southern Baptist pastor standing behind the pulpit giving you three points and a benediction and nothing ever changes. That's not my God. My God says, if you speak my word, it will not come back void. I'm looking for somebody today that will receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Whew. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. No wonder. I thought, no wonder a lot of people never see miracles. Never see God working on their behalf. Never see anything good happen around them. Never, never see it because all that comes off their lips. I wrote this in my notes. Y'all can have it later if y'all want it. It's ugly, nasty, negative, rude things. I'm like Haywood Reiner. I ain't hanging around no negative people. If you're born again saved, you should be the most joyful, happy, honorable person in this world. You sh nobody, your boss shouldn't have to tell you to go above and beyond. You should have a Holy Ghost spirit in you to say, you know what? I love you so much, I'm going to go above and beyond. I'm not going to be a normal Christian. I'm not going to sit back and just come to church. Y'all hear me today say amen. amen. Yeah, God says, whatever comes off your lips is what I will create. Alice, I can't get that out of my spirit. Courtney, whatever comes off your lips, God said, I will create. I'm going to let that sit just for a minute. Because I had to examine my heart this week. Y'all know how easy it is to be negative? Can we just be honest and not be First Baptist of Frigidaire? Y'all know how easy it is to cuss sometimes? <laughs> this side must have cussed this week. <laughs> I'm messing with y'all, man. I just love y'all. I, I want to have fun at church. Lord, I've been to church all my life and left worse when, when I was left than I did when I was at church. I was sitting there going, Lord, if this is you, something ain't right. I, I, when, I, when I went to the bars and hung out with the alcoholics and sat there, you know what? They'd give you the shirt off their back. They, they, they didn't even know you. But man, they, they will fight for you. Well, right, man, for you, I have to hit me. <laughs> y'all been there too, huh? <laughs> yeah, y'all been there too. They'll give you all the money in their back pocket. You say, Brian, how do you know? Because I've been there. Right, and you come to church? Fuss and fight and arguing. Who would want to be a part of the church? But I'm telling y'all today, the, the curse is going to be reversed. I'm telling y'all, I've got a word in my spirit. If y'all will listen to this word, it'll change your life forever. How you speak is what God creates. Woo! That's all right. That's all right, God's. Let's think about this. God spoke the world into existence. Stepped out on nothing, Joey, and said, it's kind of dark out here. Let it be light. <laughs> Sun, moon, stars. He spoke, and it's still there. That's how powerful your words are. Because if it's a spiritual word, it remains. God just spoke this into my spirit. If it's a spiritual word, it remains. If it's a negative word, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. He spoke everything into existence. And watch what God said in James 4 2. I know I'm going fast. Y'all pray for my media team. The Bible says in James 4 2, we have not. What, what's, what's he talking about? Some of you, I've heard this before. Well, I'm, I'm not going to pray that no more. I've already prayed it for five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years. I'm not, Satan's got you. I'm telling y'all, today may be your miracle. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Today may be the, you've been praying for your children, you've been praying for this church, you've been praying for your family. And what if I told you, it all depends on how you're speaking. How you're speaking. How you're speaking. What if I were to be the type of preacher, get up here and say, hey, what are y'all going to hell? You go home, you need to. But God says, I'm a good father. I'm a good God. I come to set the prisoners free. And I'm telling y'all, we're living in the last days, and you'll say it out here, but do you believe it right here? Because if you believe it right here, it's going to come out different right here. Come on, somebody. If you believe that Jesus Christ is the answer, it'll come out your mouth. You don't have to ask the granny how many grandkids she has. 
You don't have to ask me how many, how many grandchildren I have. I tell you. He said, Brian, you only got two. I, I'm prophesying four. But that's you got to wait till at least 25. <laughs> we have not because we ask not. Change your words. I want you to put this on the big screen. Y'all write this down. Change your words. Change your life. Y'all, y'all, are y'all getting this? I'm almost done, I promise. If you change your words, it changes your life. It'll change your life. If you want something different in your life, watch this. I'm being honest with you. Change your words. Change your words. If you want people to love you, <laughs> to hang out with you, change your words. If you want a breakthrough in your life, change your words. Change your words, change your life. Everybody say that. Change your words, change your life. Everybody say it again. Y'all ain't with it. So I, I thought about this. I'm <laughs> God gave us two ears and two eyes and one mouth. Come on, y'all. I'm going somewhere, I promise. So I started thinking about this. Two, two eyes, two ears, and one mouth. And I started thinking, I praised God. I said, God, thank you for just giving me one mouth. Can you imagine all of us with two mouths? Come on, y'all. I worked hard on this. Could, don't y'all be nice to each other. I'm trying, we're trying to do this. Can y'all imagine? Can, I was going to go say, I'm glad I didn't. Holy Ghost, thank you for stopping me. My God. Oh, thank you, God. Oh, God is real. Because <laughs> I was getting ready to say something. Could you imagine your pastor? You see, y'all like this. With, with a, a mouth on the left and a mouth on the right. Could y'all imagine B-Raph with two mouths? And I can't imagine y'all. <laughs> With two mouths. And I wrote this down. I wrote this down. So listen. I know. I, I want y'all to do me a favor. Because I know y'all really want to do this. <laughs> I know you really want to do that. I want you to look at your neighbor. <laughs> and I want you to say neighbor. Come on. I want everybody to participate in this. Because y'all, y'all really want to say this. Husbands, this is your time. Husbands, this is your time. And this is a sermon. That's what I love about it. Wife, this is your time too. Y'all ready? Because this and this is so real. We're having fun. But watch this. This is real. I want you to say this. Say, neighbor, I'm so thankful that God gave you only one mouth. I couldn't wait to get that out. Y'all have fun. Some of y'all are like, you're not going to fit in well at Elkhorn. Tell them again, say, neighbor, I'm so thankful. I praise God that God just gave you one mouth. <laughs> Amen. Somebody give God praise in here. Amen. With that one mouth, let's give God praise. Amen. Woo. I'm so glad y'all can take it. There's a lot of churches be offended right now. Yeah. I'm so thankful that God gave me one mouth. Come on, Dana. You, you should be shouting, girlfriend. Yeah, she should be. I'm talking. She should be speaking in tongues right now. Right now. She should be running these aisles right now. I'm telling you. But here's, here's some truth. Y'all ready? Fruitful words change families. Fruitful words. Fruitful words change marriages. Fruitful words change churches. Fruitful words change teenagers. Look at me. They do. You know what our teenagers, you know what this generation needs? is some fruitful people saying, you know what, I believe in you. Look at me, teenagers. We, we as a church, we believe in y'all. We, we believe in y'all. Come on, Beth Cochran. God called you to that generation. Our, listen, our teenagers are going to change this region. And it's our job, our responsibility to speak life and blessings over their own. Don't tell them that you just like your daddy or you just like your mama. You, but I'm being honest. It is time. I feel this in my spirit. I believe that God is going to use the Elkhorn Baptist Church to change this region. How's he going to do it? By the words that we speak over this region. God said. 
Every how you speak <laughs> is how I'm going to create. So what if I told you you could be in a situation where you're at now because you're speaking devil language instead of God language? Let's look at this. Look at this. Look at this. This is the third time. Praise St. Mila, y'all come because I, I can go on forever. And I got revival tonight, so I got I to gotta get ready. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. Y'all know this verse? You know this verse? You know this verse? But we're going to read this verse. Proverbs 18, 21. This is so good because you know why? Most people stop when we say death and life is in the power of the tongue. Stop. But there is a comma. That means a continuation. Watch this. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, comma. And those who love it will eat of its fruit. There's that fruit word again. It's going to get fruity today. There's that fruit word again. So let me tell you how the, the writer of Proverbs, how he says it. Y'all ready? Please hang with me. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. And whatever you speak is what it's going to be. So if you've got good fruit, you're going to bear good fruit. So listen, whatever you're speaking is, is what kind of fruit's going to be around you. This is going to be around you. It's going to be around you. Good fruit or bad fruit is in the power of the tongue. Good fruit or bad fruit is in the power of the tongue. Good fruit or bad fruit is in the power of the tongue. So the fruit that's around you, I'm telling you, is how you're speaking. Listen, I've got five spiritual fathers. And I think all of them, if they were standing here today, would probably tell you, and I would too, it's a challenge. But they love me. They love me enough to say, you know what, Brian? I would have done this different. But this is where God's got you. You see what I'm saying? you got to have people around you, fruit in your life. Because I'm telling you, how you speak is what's going to draw the fruit. God says, ever how you speak, y'all think about this, ever how you speak, that's how I'm going to start creating. I'm going to start forming. From, from whatever you speak is what I'm going to start forming. I love that. I can't get that out of my spirit. So if I want a fruitful marriage, whew, I need to speak fruitful things over Dana. And watch, we're moving. And guys, listen to me. It's a challenge. <laughs> it's It's challenge. Because I've got OCD really bad. And I like file 13. And I throw a lot of stuff away. And Dana, she's not like BRAF. She'll keep a screw in the floor. I will use it someday. And this is the truth. Greg, you like that too, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, Ginger Ford. You know, she back her ready. Praise God. I finally, he finally confessed it. He finally confessed it. Yeah. So the other day, man, we was, we was, we was boxing stuff up. And listen, thank y'all for allowing us the, the blessing to live in the parsonage. But it's just time. It's just time for us to have our home. It's just time for us to say, man, that's where I live. That's my, that's my forever home. But y'all have been so good to us. Thank y'all. From the bottom of my heart, I don't want, I don't want, thank y'all. Thank y'all for allowing us to live there. But it's time for us to get our forever home. And uh, we're going to squash this too. You ready? Because a lot of people says, well, Brian, he's leaving Elkhorn. Watch. I promise you, after, as soon as God speaks that to me, Dana will be the first. My leadership will be the second. And y'all will be the last. But right now, God's got me here. And I, I sort of like it. You know what I'm saying? And so we're here. We're here. And just because we get a house don't mean we're resigning. Y'all grow up. We're just getting home. We're just getting home. So, we was loading up and Dana turned her head. And so, uh, I had a trailer right back and I, I grabbed as many boxes, Thad, as I could. Because it was going to the dumpster. And so, my wife has the spirit of discernment. <laughs> And she said, uh, where, where my boxes go over here? And I'm like, what boxes? How many of you know when you're born again and saved, it's hard to lie sometimes. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, um, I put them on the trailer. That was my boxes. But I'm down there, they're empty. I'm going to fill them. I said, that's the problem. 
you just, you just look at me. Pray for me and pray, pray really for her. So this is where this sermon was birthed. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. All right, all right. He said it like this. He said it like this. He said it like this. Every how you speak, think about this. Every how you speak is how God's going to create. So every how you're speaking right now, don't be shocked. Don't be surprised about the fruit around your life. If good things are happening, Granny Harrison, it's because you're speaking fruitful things. Look, I'm proud of y'all. I'm blessed to be your pastor. I'm not going to get up here and say, shame on y'all. Shame on you bunch of heathens all living going to hell. I wouldn't do that. I love y'all. And I'm wanting to speak life over you. So I'll leave you with this. James chapter 3, verse 1 through 6. Watch, this is so powerful. Now I'm just going to read it over you. My brethren, let not many of you become teachers. Are you, why did fivefold ministry, Joey, think about this. He said, some of you don't need to teach. <laughs> Look at Some of you, I'm just being honest. I didn't say did the Bible to you. Here's why. He's so good. Knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. Uh-oh. Oh, that means this. Look, look at me. I'm not going to get all this sermon done. But look, I will stand before God. These deacons will stand before God. If you are a leader, if you are a Sunday school teacher, I'm going to get real today with y'all. We have played patty cake church too long. The Bible says, some of you just, just say no. <laughs> Don't get in leadership. Don't be a preacher. Don't be a, don't be an elder. Don't be a deacon. Don't, don't do it. Because you will stand before me. And you will give a stricter, you will have a stricter judgment. That's why I've got to preach all the Bible, Courtney. I don't get to pull and tug and say, well, tongues is controversial and we better not talk about it. No, God talked about it. I will stand before God. You as a Sunday school teacher, a leader, a Wednesday night worker, you will stand before God and give a stricter judgment. Watch. We all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he's a perfect man. Able also to bridle his whole body. Watch this. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths, uh-oh, that they may obey us. And we turn their whole body. Look also at ships. Although they're so large, they're so big, and they are driven by fierce winds. A big old boat is turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. Even though the tongue, watch, is the smallest member and boasts great things. See how a great forest fire, little fire kindles it? And the tongue is a fire. Woo. The world of iniquity. Watch. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body. Oh, 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 oh. If, if there's one bad person on the praise team, can I, can I just be honest? I'm going to get to them in just a minute. But you're, if you're negative. If, if, well, I, don't, I don't like that song. Why, why, why does Greg got us to play that song again? Because he's the leader. We, at, one, at some point in our life, we got to trust bam, the leader. We got to trust him. But if you have one member on the praise team, if you have one member, one member, the Bible says one. Everybody say one. One member out there. It will defile, Mark, the whole body. Boy, I'm telling if I had another 30 minutes with y'all, we'd go to vacation Bible school, GAs, and RAs. The Bible says, are y'all with me? Say, I'm with y'all. Listen, one person. One person is not on board. Not speaking the same language. Not going the same direction. The Bible says, Jimmy, that one person defiles. 
No wonder churches are a wreck. But I come by today. If we all become one. Start speaking the same language. Bringing the best out of each other. Edifying each other. Y'all don't know me and I don't really know all y'all. But I love you. And I promise y'all today. I'm recommitting my life. I'm repenting of my sins. And I want to make it right. And if all of us would do this, I promise you, the Bible says the smallest thing on a boat can turn it. The big old stallion, the big old horse has a little bridle in its mouth. But when my owner says, we need to go left, the horse turns left. He says, if you get the tongue right, watch. If you get the tongue right, the body will get it right. Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost. The, I wrote this in my notes. A three-inch tongue, unless you're Gene Simmons. <laughs> a three-inch tongue, watch, watch. A three-inch tongue can guide a horse, turn a ship, <laughs> and rule the body. I feel that. A three inch tongue can turn a horse, turn a ship, and turn the body. I speak today a turnaround. Y'all give me five more minutes. Five more minutes. Mark eleven twenty three through 24. Truly I tell you, I, this is it. Truly I tell you, if anyone says speaks to this mountain going back to words going back to words going back to words going back to words no wonder some of your marriages is not working how are you speaking what do you call your wife no wonder church is a mess not here praise God but we were we were. You know why? Are y'all, are, y'all, are y'all big boys, big girls? It's the way I was speaking. I got set free July, second week of July. And God says, Brian, if you believe I'm sovereign, get out of my way. Get out of my way. Get out of my way. Watch what he says. Go throw yourself into the sea. You speak it to the mountain. And does not doubt. Watch. Here's the key. And does not doubt in their heart. But believes that whatever they speak, whatever they say, it will happen. It will be done for them. It will be done for them. I didn't say this. The Bible says this. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, if you believe it, you will receive it. And it will be yours. Whatever. Whatever. Go. You want. Woo. You want your marriages to get it right? Speak it. You want the church to get it right? Speak it. So I wrote in my notes. My question to you today is this. What are you saying over your families? What are you saying over your marriage? What are you saying over your children? What are you saying over your church? What are you saying over COVID-19? My God. God, if I was listening to y'all, I would. If I was the devil, not Paul Harvey, but if I were the devil, just listen to how the church talks. We took Granny. We talk just like the world. We talk just. We act like the world. We go where the world goes. We we do what the world does. Whew. So. Here's what I'm saying. If you change your words, you'll change your life. If you change your words, you'll change your life. Somebody say that. If I change my words, it'll change my life. So, I'm ready to put some words in motion. I'm ready. I'm ready to prophesy. I battled this for a long time. I'm ready. I'm ready, are y'all? So I stop by. Here's what I just need. I need some Holy Ghost, Spirit-filled, fruitful believers to believe this with me.
because I'm declaring, hallelujah, and decreeing today that we still serve a God that can move the mountain of cancer. We still serve a God that can move the, the mountain of diabetes. We, st- I, we still serve a God that can take an addict and turn him around. We, we serve that kind of a God. He's a mountain moving God. Somebody give me praise in here if you believe what I'm saying. He can do it. Oh, God. He can do it. He can do it, church. Watch. But it depends on what you speak. Willie, that's powerful. That's so, it may not be powerful to you, but it set me free this week. Ever how you speak is how he's going to create. How many of y'all felt that? Yeah. So, how many of you know John 1 1? In the beginning was the Word, 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 Word. I wonder why they call Jesus Word. God just gave it to me. Why, why, I wonder why they call Jesus Word. And what he says, since I'm the Word, I'll move on your words. Uh. Since he is the Word, he's going to move. On our words. Does that make sense everybody? Put this on the big screen. I'm out of here. Change your words. Change your life. Change your words. Change your life. Change your words. Change your life. If y'all don't get anything out of this sermon. It's your fault. This altar is open. Some of you. Need to grab your children by the hands. You realize that they say, and I'm on Destiny Hard, from high school to college is the biggest dropout of church attendance. Two point seven one million divorces. Over seventy four million people are depressed. 132 people daily commit suicide. And we've got the answer. Change your words. Change your life. So Father God, I've done what you called me to do. Take these precious people. Change our words. Change our life. Change our words. Bring children home today, God. Use mamas and daddies to bring children home. God, bring marriages back together. May we be fruitful people. May we bear fruit fruit in our life. So Lord, I praise you and thank you for who you are and what you're doing. Bless these people in Jesus' name. All God's people said, amen. This altar's open. Y'all may be good. I know this sermon smacked me right, left, up, down, back, forth. Because you know what? Y'all can say it. Y'all can stay there if y'all want to. I'm just telling you, this is the word of the Lord. Change your words. Change your life. Change your words, change your marriage, change your words, change your children. Change your words, change this church. Change your words, change your friendships. Change your words, it'll change everything in your life. You say, Brian, how do you know? I'm proof. I got a hot, steaming, rocking marriage. And I'm not ashamed to tell y'all. How'd it happen, Brian? I changed my words. So in Jesus' name, praise team, take us into the presence of God.